six of the best external monitors for your MacBook Pro in 2022 from one of the best review sites. Let's take a look. All right, welcome back to my channel. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at six of the best monitors or external monitors for your MacBook Pro in 2022. And this is gonna come from one of the best review sites out there. It's ratings, it's called R, it's actually rtings.com, so rtings or rtings.com. They say ratings.com or they say ratings, but you have to go, it's missing the A in there. So it's one of the best review sites. They do things for TVs and monitors. I always buy my TVs looking at this kind of stuff. They do tons of different statistics on all the different devices. So they're coming up with six different, you know, six different monitors basically that are gonna be good for your MacBook Pro. So I usually do it myself. Let's see what they say, you know, and they're gonna have different categories here. They're gonna have the best uh, 4K monitor, then they're gonna have the best 10, uh, 1440p monitor, and then they're gonna have an alternative for that. Then they're gonna have the best ultra-wide monitor, then the best portable monitor, which everyone might need for like, business and travel, and finally the best budget monitor for your MacBook Pro. So this is 2022 too, coming from one of the best sites out there. So I'm gonna have a link to this article. Um, this again, this is from ratings, or it's rtings.com. I'll have a link to this. You can check them out. They're one of the best in the industry. Let's see what they say here. So if I go over to my MacBook, my own MacBook here, which I don't have an external monitor connected to it. Um, the very first one that they recommend is the best 4K monitor. So what does it say? It's gonna be the Gigabyte M32U. And this site is really good at, it's, of course, it's 4K resolution. This is a 32 inch monitor, big, big screen. 144 refresh, hertz, IPS screen, and it's got FreeSync. So the reason I like this site is it's, it gives you a lot of information. And if you guys check out a site like this, I'll, I'll bring this up. You can pause this on each of these monitors. I'm gonna click on this, but you can pause. I'm not gonna stay in here too long. But you can see the scores in here. And it gives you the scores as far as like resolution and viewing angles. It gives you, you know, as far as text clarity, you can see down here it's a 9.0. So this monitor is really good with text. It's really good with basically viewing angles. And you can get all that data from this site here. And this is why they come up with this as one of the best. It's got an 8.2 overall, which is actually really really high for the way the rating system works. So check out their site, but this is really good. So, you know, this is a great monitor for 4K if you have a good budget. And this is great for content creators like myself or someone that does YouTube videos. So it's really important for that. So at the end of the day, if I go over to, let's see what the cost of this first one is. It's not cheap, 739 bucks. I'll have links to all these on Amazon and there's one from Best Buy in the description if you guys wanna check these out. But it's 730, 740 bucks roughly, but it is 1080p. These are all gonna have, I believe, USB-C on them, so it's gonna connect directly into your MacBook, which is a key here. So it's a great monitor for kind of that, that person that wants 32 inch at 4K, great, you know, huge amount of real estate. And uh, so here it is, at, you know, obviously on Amazon. So let's keep going down the list here. The next one that they wanna do is basically gonna be the best 1440p. This could be, you know, again, for your MacBook, and what they're recommending on this one is two of them. I'll give, give you both of them. But the first one is the Asus ProArt display. And the model number is PA278CV. Um, and let's take a look at it. So here it is. It's, it's obviously 2560 by 1440, 75 hertz refresh. And it's got IPS screen as well. So if you go over here to the ratings, let's go ahead and take a look how they rated this. Again, a lot of green. And, and usually with these things, there's a lot of mixed stuff. So you see a lot of green, it means it's a really good monitor. Input lag is really good. Gray uniformity is really good. Viewing angles, you know, vertical viewing angles is 9.2, really high. So a good monitor for the money. Um, image flicker is 10, which means it's almost got zero. You know, zero image flicker. Everything's really high in the green for this. And uh, this is the Asus ProArt display. So if we go over here to on Amazon, you're gonna see here it's 355.99. So it's not too bad, not a bad cost there. And uh, overall, I think it's a good value. It's half the cost of the other one, but you're not getting 32 inch. You're not getting basically the 4K screen. This is only a 27 inch. So that's what they recommend for that kind of middle tier screen. They have an alternative down here. And uh, let me just go through that. That's the MSI Optics. And that's got a long name, so stay with me. It's the mag 274 qf I'm sorry, QRF-QD. You'll see it up there on the screen. Uh, long story short, it's another 27 inch, basically again, 2560 by 1440, 165 refresh, so it's a lot faster refresh, IPS screen. And uh, if we go over to, let's go over here and see how much this one costs. This one, 
MSI here, I'm sorry, it's 435. So you're getting, it's a little bit more money, you're getting the higher refresh rate, but it's a comparable model they're saying as far as the quality and uh, that's something that they recommend also. So let's keep going now. Now we're down to the best ultra wide. This is a 34 inch big monitor. It's basically gonna be 3,440 by 1440. And that's basically not full 4K, but it's gonna be in that kind of UHD. It's basically gonna be 34 inch IPS screen. It's got FreeSync. Again, they give it an 8.0. It's the Gigabyte M34WQ, so the M34WQ by Gigabyte. If we go over here and look at the statistics again, a lot of green in this one. We're gonna see resolution and size. Really good scores for viewing angles. Anything in the sevens are really good here. You're gonna see what's a good, input lag is really high at 9.5, 9.1 STR color volume. Color gamut is very accurate on this. So again, this is a great monitor. Now, I couldn't find it on Amazon for some reason, but if you go to Gigabyte here, I'm Gigabyte. If you go to Best Buy, ugh, if you go to Best Buy, it is about 499 bucks there. So not too bad at all, 499, 500 bucks, 34 inch, but it's one of the best from this, R, I call it R-Tings, but it's ratings, rtings.com site. And they think it's one of the best ultra if you're looking for that on your MacBook. Again, USB-C as well, which is gonna help it connect. And finally, there's two more actually here. The best portable monitor now. This is a monitor that you would use if you're traveling. It's a little obviously portable when it powers off of your MacBook and generally. And these are generally not good. I mean, they're always like the worst kind of monitors. This one's got a 7.0, pretty high for this type of a screen. Um, resolution's only 1080p because it's only 14 inch. It's a travel monitor, you pack it up. 60 hertz, all you need for something like this IPS screen. And if we go ahead in here, we're gonna see it's got some lower scores, but mostly high to mid scores, which are good for an external monitor, trust me. And there's, you know, you look at some other monitors and they're really low. Things it does bad with is black uniformity, so it's probably gonna have some grayscaling and ergonomics, so it may not be the best and easiest to set up and carry. But long story short, the viewing angles are high, text clarity is 8.5, which is really what, what's the, you know, really what matters the most when you're doing documents and traveling in a hotel. So anyways, it's called the Lenovo ThinkVision M14, and that's what they recommend. So if I go over to Amazon, we'll have a link to this in the description again, it's 244 bucks. So usually this is, you know, this is an expensive monitor for an external one, uh, for, you know, travel one, I guess. Usually those are about half that, or about 150. 244 is a little higher than normal, but you're getting that clarity of the text, which is really important, and you know it's a quality monitor. IBM too, so it's gonna survive a lot in your bag. It's not gonna break easily. Um, well, it's Lenovo, I guess. It used to be IBM, but it's Lenovo, but still, they make a lot of work computers there. So long story short, it's probably a good you know, good value. Finally, let's wrap this up. So coming from, again, Rtings, you know, rtings.com, one of the best sites out there. Their last one is the best budget monitor. So if you're on a budget, and you're looking for something that you know is gonna work great with your MacBook Pro in 2022, let's go over here, it's got an 8.0. It's the Gigabyte M27Q, Gigabyte M27Q. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll on this. You can pause the screen if you wanna go ahead and take a look at all this. Look at all those high scores. Basically, the ergonomics is the low one. Everything else is really high. Input lag is high, vertical viewing angles is high, image flicker is high, pre-calibration gradients are high. Great monitor for the money. Again, they're the ones saying that this is one of the best you can buy right now for your MacBook Pro, not me. I wanna go ahead and tell them these are the guys that know what they're talking about. So let's go over to Amazon. In here, it's only 319 bucks. So again, it's a 1440p, it's not gonna be, you know, it's not 4K, but it's gonna have really good, you know, as far as refresh rates, response times, it's, it looks like it's got FreeSync Premium. Uh, you get the idea. I mean, I'm not gonna get too much into detail because you can do your own research. This is what the experts say. 319 bucks, you might be able to find it a little bit cheaper. Anyways, at the end of the day, this is kind of what this site says, and I just wanted to kind of throw it out there. Again, I'll have links in the description to all of these so you can check them out yourself. I'm not the one that, you know, I can do personal things from my own vision, and I give people my own, you know, my own reviews. They're the ones testing it with very high precision caliber equipment and they know what they're talking about. So if you're looking for a MacBook monitor right now in 2022, I would take a look at some of these things because they probably know what they're talking about when they compare them to all the other ones out there and they probably have the data to back it up. So thanks again for watching. I hope everyone likes these kind of videos. I love making these kind of videos because you know, again, I can be an expert in some things, but I'm definitely not an expert like these guys are on this. So let's go ahead and just show you the information. Sit back and relax. And if you're looking for the monitor, go ahead and pick one up. We'll talk to everybody soon. Hope everyone's doing, you know, hopefully everyone's healthy still and everything like that. Talk to you maybe in a couple days. Peace.